okay, this is where we begin, you know. Um, we're going to be going on a little bit of a journey together, going through general chemistry. Um, the point of this set of videos is to just sort of act as a guide, a tag along to the book. The book material can be um, obtained free online, accessed for free through OpenStax. And so all you have to do is go to OpenStax.org. Uh, subject science chemistry and this is the book that we will be using okay the book gets updated occasionally a, a text version of the book can also be copied a hard copy can be can be purchased I mean for fifty five dollars you can download this this there's lots of supplemental materials for the students to use um, and this is what we use them through Chem 111 and 112 sequence at Mountain Empire Community College, and this is going to just be a, um, a lecture series, of a guide um, to how I perceive the topics that are presented in this text. It is, of course, incumbent upon you to read it for yourselves and to pull your knowledge um, directly from it, because there are many perspectives in approaching the material, right? The mental model that we build for ourselves personally is going to vary based upon our life experience and our life and the knowledge that we've obtained to that point and whether or not there are any misconceptions that are woven through it. And, and I am aware that there are probably very many misconceptions that I have as I am not an expert in all of chemistry, but I do have a good foundation in the general knowledge of chemistry and that's what this course is supposed to cover. It's supposed to cover the general base of chemistry to allow you to uh, have a better understanding of the world in which chemistry explores. So, table of contents. You can view it online and I'm already where I want to be over here so we'll just go directly to this. The introduction. Now, throughout this, um, you'll also see me flip back and forth to the periodic table. The periodic table that I'm using is free through the Royal Society of Chemistry.org website. Um, for that, uh, you can really just type in rsc.org and it'll, you'll be able to find the periodic table fairly quickly and Google it, whatever. You know how to do the internet thing and you found your way here. So. Um, this is a nice little periodic table. It, of course, right now it doesn't really seem to be, you know, any there's organized colors of, you know, right here in the rows and then this entire section except for these two. But these are at the beginning what's known as the lanthanides and the actinides, right? But this is the periodic table. This is the structure of our knowledge of chemistry. This is the way that the elements of which we will be discussing today are arranged in such a manner that we can um, well make sense of them that, that we can make sense of the observations that relate them and as you, as you will tell we have grouped them up and we will be discussing why they are grouped in this way in this course that's what we will be exploring um, if you hover over the elements each one provides a basic overview. You don't need to know all of this stuff right now, but we will be exploring each of these th things throughout this, uh, actually, this semester. We will be understanding each of these. Now, this supply risk thing is, is interesting. That may be a, uh, a project for my own students later on. We'll, we'll see. Um, anyway, I'll be flipping back and forth in order to, in order to uh, have an example to point to. Okay, so starting off right here at the beginning, at the introduction, the introduction of this, it, you know, it's a little bit of just, hey, getting us set up for chemistry, okay? That's great. Um, right, about this book, this, this gives a little bit of, uh, you know, it's, it's for a two semester general chemistry course. This is aimed, the, the way that I'm presenting it is aimed more towards those who are expecting their majors to be within the uh, STEM or the STEM H, uh, STEM plus H, you know, I don't know, um, sequence, right? We're, we're wanting 
individuals who are really um, wanting a little bit of a firmer foundation, including the math, right? Um, including not only the, the mental model of the subatomic realm, but and a familiarity with the language of chemistry, but we're, we're trying to hit a little bit deeper into the theory, into, into the mathematical foundations for our understanding, right? The digging into the data, digging into the decimals. So, uh, the book is laid out, and I will be approaching it in, in a very similar manner to how it is laid out, the introduction uh, 1.1, just sort of what we're doing in chemistry, right? and going through, we'll learn a little bit of the math that we need in order to approach chemistry from the beginning. Um, then we'll break down and we'll start discussing of the atoms themselves and how the atoms come together and the different properties that they may have. Relating that to our experience in the macroscopic realm going through the stoichiometry in order to actually rearrange and balance the equations that you may have seen if you've, if you've had any experience with chemistry at, 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 up to this point. A little bit about the energy, the energy of chemistry, the thermodynamics. We'll um, then learn more about the, this, this, this will help us learn why the periodic table is arranged in the fashion that it is. Then, based upon those properties, why element, why, why compounds of the molecules, why well, molecules uh, have the properties that they do, why they have the, the structure that they do. We'll learn about the different types of bonding, how the elements are able to come together to form these larger structures, these molecules and compounds. Then we'll actually start talking about specific states of matter, gases of which you are familiar in a sense, liquids and solids, a little bit of the properties of, of the interactions of, of the solutions. Um, when things are uh, a solution, we'll define things, right? That's the big problem right now. If you're not catching all of the words that I'm throwing out, that's perfectly understandable. A lot of what we have to do when approaching any science is we have to get a good foundation of definitions down. And of the definitions in chemistry, there are many. Right. But with the language comes the knowledge, right? It is simply not enough to be able to pronounce these things, but to understand what they represent, to be able to understand what they mean to another individual if you use those words. And some individuals do not have those words as of yet. And we will be discovering them together. Okay. A little bit more about energy. Energy is a, is a big thing. Chemistry is not simply the study of the stuff, but how it interacts and, and the properties that the stuff has and some of those properties. Okay. Matter and energy, right? Einstein, everybody knows the, the well, have been saying that E equals MC squared. It's an equivalence between energy and mass. They are one and the same and therefore, we must talk about both of them if we wish to talk about one of them. Right? And so we got more into energy here. And and from here on out, we're talking about we're talking about uh, the, the fact that everything in the universe is, is in an equilibrium. Everything is trying to reach a state of equilibrium. Everything's trying to sort of relax. That's that's what's as it moves forward. The universe is relaxing. Energy, we're talking about electrochemistry here, we're talking about batteries, we're talking about, um, um, I mean, how, how, electron, how electronic, uh, electronics work, really, I mean, we're, we're talking about um, corrosion, electrolysis, right? Uh, okay. Electrochemistry, right? Electronic chemistry, electron talking about the movement of these things that we'll learn about called the electrons. Then we get into a little bit more specific, and I won't actually be covering most of this stuff. I'll, I'll probably skip over. I'll hit all to the, the transition metals and the coordination chemistry. Um, this I may get to at some point. It's not high priority, though. Um, 
organic chemistry, an introduction to the organic chemistry is, is required. It's, it's necessary for a lot of individuals to have a um, to have to have a second course after this sequence, a second sequence in organic chemistry, general chemistry, then organic chemistry, and then there's also analytical chemistry and biochemistry, physical chemistry, which is my favorite type of chemistry, and inorganic chemistry, of which I'll probably ramble on at some point throughout the semester, but Okay, then nuclear chemistry. This is important because it's fun. I enjoy talking about it, so I'll definitely be covering this. Right? And then out over here, we'll have the index. We've got the index of these things I will be pointing to throughout the semester. We will be using. So throughout these videos, you'll see me occasionally pulling up some of these. Um, uh, they do have their own periodic table. And this is nice, it's got, you can see there's, you know, it's a little bit more filled out on the surface, but it doesn't go into quite as deep as um, I like. So I will be referring to the RSC. Okay. But then we've also got, you know, a little bit of some background, some mathematics and the units and conversion factors going through. And then right here, what we have, we've got a lot of, a lot of the um, the actual properties listed out data in, in tabulated tabulated form. Whether it comes from theory or experiment, we've got the tabulated values here, and this is acts as a reference, right? As a reference material for answering some of those questions that we may come up with as we move throughout the course. With that being the introduction to this, we shall move to the next chapter.